Hello students, today in your algebra class you're going to be working on solving systems of equations using elimination. So, to start, let's try these two warm-up problems. I suggest that you pause this problem, pause this screencast, try to solve these two problems and check your answers. Hopefully you've paused your answers and you're just checking them, or hopefully you've paused the screencast and you're just checking your answers now. So for the first one, because we're using substitution, we're going to take the first equation, because it's already y equals, and we're going to substitute it into the second equation. So we have 2y plus 2x equals 2. Now, anytime we see y, we're going to substitute it in with 1 half x plus 4. So 2 times 1 half x plus plus 4 plus 2x equals 2. Now again, we substituted y with 1 half x plus 4 because that's what y is equal to according to what was given. Now we're going to distribute that 2, so we're going to end up with x plus 8 plus 2x equals 2. We have 3x plus 8 equals 2. We're going to subtract 8 to both sides. We're left with 3x equals negative 6. And x equals negative 2. So now we know what x is equal to. We're going to take that and substitute it into the second equation. And the second equation, or sorry, the first equation is y equals 1 half x plus 4. And because we know y is equal to negative 2, we have 1 half times negative 2 plus 4 y equals negative 1 plus 4, therefore y is equal to 3. So now we know what y equals and x equals. For the second problem, we have the, actually no, we have x equals on the bottom equation, so we could just throw that into the top. So we're starting off with x minus y equals 1, and remember, x is equal to 1 half y plus 2, because it states that right here. It says x equals 1 half y plus 2. So we have 1 half y plus 2 minus y equals 1. Now because we know 1 half y minus y is negative 1 half y plus 2 equals 1, then we know we could subtract 2 to both sides. We're left with negative 1 half y equals negative 1. And because we want to isolate the y, we have to get rid of the negative and the divide 2. So the opposite of negative, the opposite of divide 2 is to multiply by 2. And because we want to get rid of the negative, we're going to multiply by negative as well. So we're going to multiply by negative 2 and we're left with y equals 2. So now what we know what y is equal to. We're going to substitute it into the easier equation, which in this case is x minus y equals 1. So x minus y is equal to 2. So we substitute that in. Add 2 to both sides. We get x equals 3. So now we have our solutions. So, let's move on. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to solve systems of equations using elimination. Now, in most instances, elimination typically works the fastest and the easiest as opposed to substitution because there's less work involved, there's less less moving around of manipulating of equations. So, elimination is exactly what it sounds like. We're going to eliminate a variable, and the way we do that is to add or subtract vertically. So I'm going to write this line under it because this is something you should be used to. Notice how we have 
our x and y is on the same side, which is exactly what we want. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to look to eliminate one of our variables. Now, notice that our x's, they both are the same exact x's but opposite signs, which is what we're looking for. Now what happens is we're going to have to add these two equations together. So 7x plus negative 7x is 0, so we've done our job, we've eliminated a variable. Then 2y plus y is 3y, and 10 plus negative 16 is negative 6. Now we're going to divide by 3 to both sides. We find y is equal to negative 2. In this instance, elimination is much simpler than substitution. But again, now that we know what y is equal to, we have to take it and substitute it into an equation to find our x. So I'm going to substitute it into the top one. Again, it doesn't matter which one you do it to. So we have 7x plus 2, and y is equal to negative 2, equals 10. So we have 7x minus 4 equals 10. We're going to add 4 to both sides. We're left with 7x equals 14. Divide 7 to both sides. We're left with x equals 2. So now we know what x equals and y equals. The next example is fairly straightforward as well, but there is one difference. Notice how our x's are not exactly the same and neither are our y's. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to alter one of the equations by multiplying or dividing to make it match. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to decide do we want to eliminate our x first or our y first. Again, it doesn't matter, we just want to find the easiest one to eliminate. So let's do a quick examination. We have 3x and 4x. In order for those two numbers to match, we have to multiply the top by 4 and the bottom by 3. So, kind of complicated. If we try to eliminate the y's, because they're so closely related, 1 is 10, 1 is 40, Technically, all you would have to do is multiply the top equation by 4, because then it would make it 40, and the signs of the numbers would be different, because we want them to cancel each other out. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply by 4 to the whole top equation. So we're going to multiply by 4 to the entire thing. Okay, that's going to give us 12x minus 10y equals negative 25. Oh, I'm sorry. 12x minus 40y equals negative 100. Because we have to distribute that 4 to everything. Then we have the bottom equation still which we didn't touch, so 4x plus 40y equals 20. Now what we can do is we're going to add vertically. So 12x plus 4x is 16x, negative 40y plus 40y is 0, and negative 100 plus 20 is negative 80. Now what we're going to do is divide by 16 to both sides. And, and that should give us x equals negative 5. So now we know what x is equal to. Now we have to solve for y. So we're going to go ahead and substitute it into the bottom equation. Again, you could substitute it in into either one or any equation, either the top or the bottom. So for x, x we know is negative 5 plus 40y equals 20. We have negative 20 plus 40y equals 20. We're going to add 20 to both sides, again, to isolate the variable. And we're left with 40y equals
equals 40. Divide by 40 to both sides. Y is equal to 1. So now we know what Y is equal to. And we have X and Y done. Next one. Number three is slightly more tricky because it doesn't come out as clean as number two as well. In this case, we can eliminate the x's or eliminate the y's. So, to eliminate the x's, we'd have to make these numbers match. So, the least common multiple for both of them would be 12. That would mean multiply this by 3 and multiply this by 2. And, because these two numbers are the same sign or the same parity, we have to make one of them a negative. So let's try that. I'm going to multiply the top equation by 3. Again, because we want it to be 12. So 3 times everything. And the bottom equation we're going to multiply by 2 to everything. Now, if you can imagine, we're going to have 12x for both of them, for both equations, but they're the same sign, which we don't want. We want one of them to be a negative. So what we're going to do is, we're going to multiply the bottom equation by, or we're going to add a negative, or we're going to make the bottom equation a negative as well. So when we do that, we're going to write our answers to the right, so it's easier to spot. So this one's going there, that one's going there. We're going to end up with 12x plus 15y equals 45. The bottom equation, because we're multiplying by negative 2, will become negative 12x plus 8y equals negative 22. Now notice how because we made the 2 a negative, it made it so that our x's will cancel out. So, draw a line under, and we're going to add it. So 12x minus 12x is 0. 15y plus 8y is 23y. And 45 plus negative 22 is 23. So we're going to divide by 23 to both sides. We're left with y equals 1. And now we get to choose an equation, the top one or the bottom one, so we, that we can figure out what x is. So, I'm going to take, pick the top one. So 4x plus 5y equals 15. 4x equals 5 times y is 1 equals 15. We're now going to subtract 5 to both sides. We're left with 4x equals 10. Divide 4 to both sides. We're left with x equals 5 halves. So now we know x equals and y equals. Now for the final problem, this one works just like the cows and the, oh sorry, the pigs and the chicken problem. It says your school sold 456 tickets for a school play. So as soon as I saw those numbers, that's something I'm going to write down. 456 tickets. An adult ticket costs, so adult ticket, 350 Student ticket, $1. Okay. So these are notes that you definitely want to take when you're doing word problems because it helps organize your data. It says ticket sales, so total ticket sales, total ticket sales, equaled 1131 $1,131. It says let A be equal to number of adult tickets and S be equal to the number of student tickets. Okay. Now it says A write a system of equations that relates the number of adult and student tickets sold 
to the number of to the total number of tickets sold and to the ticket total ticket sales. So notice it says total number of tickets. Then it also says total total ticket sales. So one is referring to the amount of tickets sold and the other one is saying the total ticket sales, so the amount of money raised. So using the data that we gathered earlier, we're going to use that to help us write an equation. So the total number of tickets sold. Well, it says that there was 456 tickets sold, right? So those ticket sales were composed of adult tickets plus student tickets. So the number of adult tickets, A, plus the number of student tickets, S, is equal to 456. Now the total ticket sale prices totaled 1131. Now that's the total number of ticket sales, but those ticket sales were not just one price. It had adult tickets and student tickets. Now. The problem is, is that this equation has to deal with money, so we need to throw our dollar amounts in here. The adult tickets sold for three fifty, and the student tickets sold for one dollar. So now our equations make sense because the number of tickets sold is listed, and the total ticket sales includes the dollar amounts, which is a three fifty for adults and dollar for students. Now that's part A. Part B says solve by elimination. So now that all this data we collected, organized, and used, now what we're going to do is use the two equations that we wrote to solve the rest. So because they said use elimination, we're trying to eliminate one of the variables. Now, if we look at the two equations, our A's. They're close because they have 350. One has 351, and one of them has one, because there's only one A there. The S's, they're already the same number. They just have the same sign, so we have to change it. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by negative one to the entire top equation. And by doing that, we're going to be able to eliminate our S's, or our students. So, I'm going to write our new equations on the right, and we're going to get negative a minus a or minus s equals negative 456. The bottom equation shouldn't have changed at all because we didn't multiply by anything to it. So, we now have when we multiply or when we add vertically, we now have negative 250a. The s's get canceled out, and 1131 minus 4, sorry, negative 456 plus 1131 is, is 675. Now we're going to divide by negative 250 to both sides. Oh, I'm sorry. This should be equal to positive 250. So we're going to divide by 250 to both sides. A turns out to be equal to 270. So the number of adult tickets sold was 270. So now we know the number of adult tickets is 270. Now, we know that there were 456 tickets sold total. So if the number of students and the number of adult tickets sold were 456, and we had 270 student tickets, well, we could just subtract 270 from 456, and we'll find out that we have we have 186 student tickets sold. Now it's your turn. 
try solving these problems using elimination. First person to post will post on Edmodo. Everyone else will just reply. That's all for now. See you guys next time.